Hi everyone, Ashley with Pleasant Grove Homestead. It is January and we have just processed our beef and our pork. And so it's a perfect time to show you how to render the fat from an animal as well as what the differences are in that animal fat and how we cook with them. And so here we actually only cook with animal fat. So that would be tallow, which is beef fat. And the tallow specifically comes from inside the animal. It's by its kidneys. And so um, we'll show you what that looks like and how it works in cooking. And here it is as the finished product. And then lard from our pigs looks almost identical. Um, leaf lard, um, particularly leaf lard, meaning that fat that comes from inside the animal by its kidneys, is used primarily for baking. It's what makes your biscuits really flaky or a flaky pastry. And then pigs also, we render the back fat, which is more used for like frying foods. Um, with the tallow, what you're looking for is both cooking fat and it's also really good for your skin because the structure of beef fat, specifically tallow, that fat that's inside the animal by its kidneys, is almost identical to human skin cells. And so it's really nourishing for our skin and it's really healing and repairing when used on our skin. The third fat that we cook with here is butter. Um, but cooking with these two animal fats is far superior because they have a higher smoke point. Um, they also don't have as many other uses and so if you think about butter um, you can quickly use up a lot of butter in your cooking and so tallow and lard make a great additional resource. So in today's video we are going to cover everything from how to render the fat to how to use it and so we'll get started in the kitchen now. So um, first, um, you're gonna take your fat and you're gonna cut it up. This is the beef tallow. This is what it looks like when it comes straight, straight off the cow. And so we are going to cut this into small pieces. On our homestead, we do have a meat grinder or even like a small KitchenAid grinder. And so we can keep our pieces pretty big. If you don't have a grinder, Cut these pieces in half again and skip the grinding step and you will be just fine. It will take a little bit longer, but definitely um, use a grinder if you have one. If you're having your um, meat processed at a locker, you can ask them if they can grind it for you. Again, it will just make it a little bit quicker, but it's really not going to take that much longer if you have to have them grind it. And so here we are running it through the grinder. Um, we've got a really old, old style grinder and so it's going to come out looking like this from our grinder. And we always run the lard through the grinder after we've ran all of our meat through the grinder. So while you're cutting up your lard, you're removing any pieces of meat um, because that will make it spoil faster. And so here um, you just render through everything. Here it is all rendered and I put it in my roaster. I have too much to use in a crock pot, but I do prefer the crock pot, but I have the roaster. I'm gonna put it on very low heat until it all is melted. And I just leave it on that low heat setting all overnight and then you'll see these little bits like this is stuff that isn't rendered into fat some of it is like um, bits of meat some of it is um, like glands from the animal and so we're going to strain all of that out so I have my cheesecloth and a colander and I'm going to strain it into a five gallon bucket because I'm dealing with a very large amount of animal fat and you need to do this when it's still warm because once it solidifies, it'll become a solid again. And so we're, rend we're straining it. So we're straining it while it's still liquid form and it's too hot, but just keep, keep going at it. Try to keep all of those bits out. All of those bits will make your product spoil faster. And so it's important to keep your cheesecloth clean as possible and try to keep all of those little bits out of your lard because 
you're just going to be helping it spoil if you've got any of those extra things in there. So then overnight, I let the lard sit and harden and now I'm literally cutting it out of the bucket and um, checking to see how clean it is. At this point, any of those bits that still got in there are going to have sunk to the bottom. And so uh, now what I'm going to do is dump it into the pot again and see if there's any of that um, sediments in there that I need to take out. I forgot to add earlier that I did add some water into my pot the first time just because I think it makes for a cleaner product if you add some water and then that water gets the water will not solidify when your tallow does and so here I'm going to dump the bucket and there'll be a little bit of water I'll separate the water from the tallow <laughs> And it looks like a perfectly clean piece. I don't see any of those little um, gunky bits on there like we did before. So I'm going to dump out that water and put just the tallow into the roaster now. And I'm going to let it melt down again. I'm going to do that whole process where I let this chunk of tallow melt on really low heat. And then I'll strain it all into whatever jars I'm going to store it in. So here we're going for our final strain. And I use half gallon jars because that's the frequency that we use through it. Most people would use pints, um, but we go through our animal fat pretty fast. We do keep it uh, shelf stable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid on it while the jar is still really hot and that heat will seal the jar. Um, also, we're talking about a year's worth of animal fat. It, it doesn't spoil very quickly if you've made sure to get all those little gunky bits out. And so you can keep it in your fridge, you can keep it in your freezer, but in our basement, we've had no trouble storing the product and having it not spoil because we're gonna go through it in less than a year. So I'm using my canning lid and it, it, it will create a seal. It's not canning, right? Because we didn't like put it in a water bath or anything, but I am gonna just put the lids on and put it on the shelf and it's a, a good solid product. Okay, now we're back in the kitchen and you can see even in the jar, this tallow is a little bit harder and that's why if you've ever had tallow that you've used on your skin, it's usually mixed with just a little bit of avocado oil or coconut oil because it's just a harder product. So that one was the beef tallow and then this is the pork lard. This one is the leaf lard and it is softer and you can tell that it's softer and more pliable um, without anything extra being added. That's why it's great for biscuits. It stays nice and flaky. Um, the pork fat also will look more similar to this when it, it's in its finished form. And so um, just kind of for a point of reference, off of our beef, um, this was a, a Dexter beef, and so it's one of the smaller breeds of beef. Also not fed grain, so he didn't have any back fat to render. We only got the kidney fat, but we had eight of these jars, and these are half gallons, so that's four gallons of beef tallow. And then um, we actually combined some other um, lard from our freezer, and so it's probably about two pigs worth of leaf lard, and that had three of these size half gallon jars, and then um, he wasn't a very fatty pig, and so just one jar of the fat that comes from not near the kidney area. And so um, that will give us a good start on our cooking oil for the year, and kind of my preference is to save the tallow, because we only really process one beef a year here in our home and so I'll save the tallow because we need it for our skincare. It really helps if you have eczema or any type of rashes because again the tallow the tallow cells the cells of 
beef fat are identical to your skin and so it's really nourishing and really good for your skin so we reserve it for that use and then my second favorite thing is to do fries with tallow um, because the smoke point is highest they just turn out really crispy and delicious whether you're in the oven or in the skillet tallow gets my first pick for making fried potatoes and then leaf lard um, gets reserved for any baking and then also i'm using like if a recipe, let's say there's cookie bars and they call for one cup of butter, I will use half a cup of butter and half a cup of lard. Both of these fats, because they weren't attached to any meat, because they're inside the animal near the kidney, they don't have any meat taste. They don't taste like pork and they don't taste like beef. It's a really neutral flavor. And so when I'm using leaf lard, I will use half butter, half leaf lard in any recipe that calls for butter. It's uh, more economical and also makes for a nice texture in the product. Um, and then the pig's back fat is what we use for almost all other cooking. So frying eggs, greasing a skillet, all other cooking. Anytime it says to toss something in olive oil, we are using lard or uh, or tallow if I have enough of it and so um, that's how we use those oils in our cooking and um, I hope that this was helpful to you um, there will be this YouTube video as well as the blog post to go along with it so go ahead and read that if you need to know any more about um, resources for cooking with animal animal fats and um, thank you for tuning in give us a follow and give this a like and a share if you found it educational we really appreciate it